السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وآله وصحبه وبارك سلم دائما أبدا All praises due to Almighty Allah, Durood and Salams upon Aqai Naamdar, Madni Tajdar, Hadrat Ahmad Mustafa, Muhammad Mustafa, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace, blessings, and salutations upon the Ambiya Ikram, Ahlul Bayt Athar, Sahab Ikram, Khulafa Rashidin, Tabeein, Tabe Tabeein, Aimmai Mushtahidin, Auliyai Kamilin, and all those who will follow the path until the last day. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His infinite mercy and through the wasila of Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for blessing us with the opportunity to spend some time in remembering Him and His beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in attempting to share some words of knowledge. Hosea adam damane besaru sama madade قبلائے دی مددے کعبائے ایمہ مددے قادریم نارائے یا غوثِ عظم میزنم دمز شیخ احمد رضا خان قدبِ عالم میزنم سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خازند آباد حاملِ فیضِ رضاِ مصطفیٰ امداد کن صلی اللہ علیہ النبی الامی و علیہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلاة و السلام علیکہ یا سیدی یا سندی یا حبیبی یا طبیبی يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا رحمة للعالمين. Before we commence or continue, let us all direct our hearts and our minds towards the Mubarak Court of the beloved Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم. And in doing so. Let us all recite the Rudi Pak. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin salatan daimatan makbulatan tu'addi biha anna haqqahu al-azim. As you are all aware that we have made niyat during the 21 days of lockdown that we are facing here in South Africa, we will attempt every day to have a short discussion for 30 minutes to an hour on numerous different topics which we have sent out to you. Yesterday we presented the usual Juma lecture in a different time slot and today inshallah ul azim the topic for discussion or the subject is let's strengthen our iman. Now, every Muslim knows that the most valuable and the most important thing for us is our Iman, without which a person is nothing. Everything depends on Iman. And Iman is the ruh and the soul of everything that we do in this dunya. And Iman is that which will bless us with kamyabi in the world. And Iman is that which will be our means of salvation in the akhirat. Today's discussion is more of a lesson rather than a lecture so that we may simply understand the basics of Iman and Aqaid. It's a very vast discussion and cannot be completed in a short space of time. So I've decided to just touch on this discussion very briefly and inshallah we will do so in the next three weeks on the Saturdays. And obviously during our other discussions as well, in all the other days that we will discuss whichever topic comes in, we will be talking about Iman as well, because everything has to do with Iman. No matter whichever direction we take, we will come back to Iman. 
All of you know this, that as Muslims, we read and believe in the kalima La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is this kalma which is the deciding and the distinguishing factor between us and those who have no iman. In other words, it is the distinguishing factor between the believers and the unbelievers. Which is the distinguishing factor? La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In other words, there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the deciding and the distinguishing factor between us and the kuffar, between us and the unbelievers. And it is by this kalima that it is decide, decided who has iman and who truly believes in the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa and who does not believe. All that depends on this kalima, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Inshallah, as we go further, I will discuss that in a little bit of detail. Uh, if not today, then inshallah, in the next uh, session on this discussion. However, we should understand <coughs> that as believers, it is very important for us to know our aqaid, our belief, our aqidah. And the first two things that are very important to understand is what should our aqidah and our iman be regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's zat and Allah's sifat. In other words, Regarding Allah's divine being and Allah's divine attributes. What should our iman and our qidah be? What can we accept? What can we not accept? Then we have to also understand what should our qidah be regarding the Nabis and the Rasuls. What can we accept and what can we not accept? But to know these things or to accept this in totality, there is the need for ilm, for knowledge regarding it. If one does not have knowledge, it will be very difficult to differentiate between right and wrong. That is why the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fidaka Abi wa Ummi, may our parents be sacrificed at his holy feet, said that to attain knowledge is farad upon every Muslim male and female. In other words, to attain the knowledge of deen is an obligation upon us. Because any nation without knowledge, any nation without ilm is like a ship without a captain. And without this knowledge, we will not be able to sail through the storms of difficulty that we face in our dunya or the storms of other issues that we face in the dunya. We will not be able to navigate our way to the mercy of Allah and His Rasul because we will not know what is the difference between right and wrong. And this is why it is so important for us to understand our aqaid and because many people don't understand their basic beliefs, even though they may accept and they say it, but because they do not understand the depth of it, the bad mazhabs and the deviants find it very easy to mislead them and to trap them in their traps of deceit and the web of deceit. So to save ourselves from all of this, it is very, very important for us to understand how we should Get this knowledge, number one, and whom you should get this knowledge from. You must understand when it comes to the knowledge of deen, it is of utmost importance that you get it from the right source. Because if a person thinks he's taking knowledge, but he's taking it from a deviant, then it is destructive to his iman, to his amal, and to the rest of his life. But if he takes even a little from those who are truly from the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'at, then inshallah al Azim, he will be blessed in this dunya, and that will be a means of his salvation in the akhirat as well. So as I was saying that as believers, we must know what our belief and our aqidah is regarding Allah's divine being and attributes. Now I'm going to touch on this very briefly today, as my main maqsad and my main intention today is to speak about the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and some important points of aqaid regarding the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because this is where the deviants try to confuse the Muslims most. This is where they try to cause difficulty in the lives of believers 
by distancing them from the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and by saying this is not allowed and this is bidat and this is shirk and this is an innovation and you cannot do this and you cannot do that. So we should clarify these things and learn about them and understand these things so that we may be safe from the fitna of these deviants and we may protect our iman because as I said in the beginning and as every one of you knows that iman is our most valuable belonging. Without that we have nothing. So as, I, as we are saying that we should understand and we should know as Muslims what we should accept and what we should believe in when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm starting here very, very briefly. And this is a basic that every one of you knows. That, amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi. We know all of this. Wal yawmi al-akhri wal qadri khairi wa sharri min Allah ta'ala wal ba'asi ba'da al-mawt. We know, we have to believe in Allah, we have to believe in His angels, we have to believe in His rasuls, we have to believe in His books, we have to believe that good and bad is by the will of Allah, we have to believe that life after death is a reality. But with all this, it is also important to understand what should our Akidah be? And then, what should our Akidah be concerning the Rasuls? We say we believe in Allah, we believe in uh, in, in the Rasuls, we believe in the angels, we believe in the books, but what should we believe? What can we accept and what can't we accept? And this is very important. Now all of us know that Allah, Almighty Allah is one. No Muslim does not know this, that Allah is one. And this is Tawheed, to believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we believe Allah is one, then to believe that Allah is one, you have to believe that He has no partners. When you say, I believe that Allah is one, when you believe in the Tawheed, and you say Allah is one, you have to also at the same time believe that one means He has no partners. And when we say Allah has no partners, then we need to understand that Allah has no partners in being, in His Zat, in His Sifat, in His actions, in His commands, or in His names. In anything, there is no equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say Almighty Allah is one, Allah has no partners in His Zat or His Sifat, in His actions, in His commands, in His names. None is partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you say Allah is one, you have to accept that Allah is no partner. Whether it is in Zat, whether it is in Sifat, whether it is in His actions, whether it is in His commands, whether it is in His names. In all of this, Allah has no partners. There are no partners to Allah. When you say Allah is one, you also have to accept that Almighty Allah is wajib al-wujud. In other words, His existence is necessary and His non-existence is muhal. In other words, Allah is all existent. You have to accept this. That there is no end to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no beginning. And when we say His non-existence is muhal, it means, muhal means it's totally impossible. It cannot happen in, in layman's terms, in a simple manner of explaining. It is not a possibility. It cannot happen. So, His non-existence is muhal. Then you have to also accept that Almighty Allah is Qadim Azaliyun Abadi. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is existing without beginning and end. Allah always was, always is, always will be. And everything else except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's zat and his sifat, everything else is a creation. Everything else is a creation, is hadith. Everything is hadith, it's a creation. Allah always existed. And Allah will always exist. And this is why we say Allah is Azali and Allah is Abadi. And Allah alone, when you say Allah is one, then you must also accept at the same time that Allah alone is worthy of only the one worthy of worship. Because when you say Allah is one, then Allah alone is worthy of worship. Nobody else can be worshipped. That is why Huzuri Sayyidi Sadr Sharia radiallahu anhu has explained this, which I'm mentioning to you, which I've just mentioned to you from in Bahari Shariat. Huzur Sadr Sharia Badru Tariqah has beautifully explained all of this. However, it must be understood that when we say Almighty Allah is one, and a person believes that, or if a person says that I believe Ma'adallahi Rabbil Alim, that there is some other Allah, then he has attributed partner to Allah, he has associate partner to Allah. That person is out of the folds of Islam. At the same time, we should keep this Aqidah that Allah Ta'ala is free from need and want. What does this mean? It means that Allah is totally independent. 
In other words, Allah is neither dependent on anyone nor on anything. Rather, you and I, the sun, the moon, the stars, the trees, the plants, the animals, all depend on Almighty Allah. The sun does not rise by itself and the sun does not set by itself. The stars do not enter the sky shining by themselves. The trees do not grow by themselves. Everything happens by the will of Almighty Allah. And everything depends on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything depends on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why when we say that Almighty Allah is free from need, from need and want, it means that Almighty Allah is not in need of anything from anyone. Almighty Allah does not depend on anything or anyone. In other words, every single atom in the creation is dependent on one creator. On who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are those who think, Allah forbid that Allah has created the angels etc. to carry out certain duties. So that means that Allah forbid Allah is dependent on them to do these chores. Allah forbid. This is totally incorrect. Almighty Allah created the angels as his servants. And Allah afforded them the honor and the opportunity to serve him as their Rabb. It is the angels and the entire creation that is dependent on Allah. And Allah is without doubt dependent on none. These are the basic things that we have to know about our Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a lengthy discussion on this in Bahari Shariat, inshallah lazim. In the next two sessions I will try and touch on the Aqaid again, discussing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to now jump to the next discussion. And that is regarding Nubu'at. And Huzur al-Sadr Sharia radiallahu says, just as it is of utmost importance for a Muslim to have knowledge regarding the Zat and the Sifat, in other words, the being and the attributes of Almighty Allah, so that he does not become an unbeliever by rejecting any necessity or accepting something that is absolutely impossible. It is very important to have the knowledge. Otherwise, he could do this. Similarly, it is of utmost importance to know what is permissible, compulsory, and absolutely impossible for a Nabi. Since to accept a muhal and to reject that which is compulsory is the path to kufr. It is very possible that due to a lack of knowledge, one may hold an improper belief or say something which is contrary to correct belief, thus causing his own destruction and harming his own iman. Now, when we talk about our aqaid and our, our belief, Concerning the Anbiya Ikram, Ali Musalatu Wasalam, one of the first things that we talk about is that a Nabi, who is a Nabi? A Nabi refers to that human upon whom Allah sent down Wahi. What is Wahi? Revelation. Divine revelation from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a Nabi refers to that human upon whom Allah sent down Wahi for the purpose of guidance. Why do they receive Wahi? So that they may guide the people by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what are we saying? We are saying that a Nabi refers to that human upon whom Allah sent down wahi for the purpose of guidance. And a Rasul is not only specific to humans, as they are angels as well who are Rasuls, Hazrat Jibreel al-Islam, etc. They are Rasul malaika. So a Nabi is specific to humankind. And Rasuls, also amongst the malaika. Now, something very important here. Now, this is why we say it is so important to understand what is our aqidah. Look what the basic rule that I've mentioned to you, the basic aqidah that I've mentioned, is that a nabi refers to that human upon whom Allah sent down wahi for the purpose of guidance. Now, the deviants here they come with their misled and their corrupt and deviant ways and try to confuse the unsuspecting Muslims. What they come and say? They said, look, even you are saying a Nabi refers to that human upon whom Allah sent down revelation for the purpose of guidance. So, why are you giving so much of greatness and so much of excellence 
to Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is a human. He is a human because a Nabi refers to that human. Yes, we accept that the Nabi is human. His nur came in the form of man. His reality is light. He came in the form of human. So that has fulfilled that classification of human. But when they say that, why are you people over praising Rasulullah Park sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Yes, he's Allah's Nabi, but he's a human. Before I go and explain a little bit more about this, let me tell you that indeed he's a human. We have said this in our lectures, we say this in our talks, we hear this from all the ulama ahl sunnah Our Nabi is indeed a human. We believe he's a human. It is our aqidah because a Nabi has to be human. Okay, for him to be a Nabi, a Nabi is a human. Allah sends revelation upon him. He must be from mankind. Okay, but for you to understand that the Nabi is a human, but he is the most exalted and the most extraordinary human. There is none like Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There was none like Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And there will be none like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You cannot compare in any way to a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. More so to Imam al-Anbiya, Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Say the Allah Hadrat, Imam ahl sunnat we call Allah Hadrat the Imam of the ahl sunnat because when the deviants were trying their best to destroy the iman of the Muslims and to damage the aqidah of the unsuspecting Muslims, the laymen. At that time, Ala Hadrat Imam Ahl Sunnat Imam Ahmad Raza radiallahu an stood up for the truth. Ala Hadrat Adimul Barkat radiallahu an is that personality who saved our iman in this zamana. It is his karam, it is his blessing that he spread such seas of knowledge and wisdom that more than hundred years have passed ki ala hadrat adimul barkat imam ahl sunnat radiyallahu has left the dunya but when there is a need to attack issues of either iman and aqidah or even on issues of furu furu issues issues that are relating to to laws etc people have to go back to the works of Allah Hadrat Azimul Barakat radiallahu an. Allah Hadrat Azimul Barakat radiallahu an is the savior of our iman in this zamana. Leave alone Allah Hadrat's manuscripts and the volumes that he has written regarding the excellence of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Leave all the fatawa of Allah Hadrat Azimul Barakat radiallahu an. Just if you take the poetry of Allah Hadrat Azimul Barakat radiallahu an. And if a person reads those ash'ar with sincerity, and inshallah I will discuss them in detail we have, as we have one session that we'll be talking about the, 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 the nath couplets and the stanzas, I will discuss inshallah some ash'ar there in detail. But if you look at the kalam of Allah Hadrat Adimul Barakat radiallahu anh, you will find that every share, every couplet, every, every stanza is a ship of salvation. Every stanza is there to protect our iman and our aqidah. Likewise on this topic of human where these people say that Rasul Pak is an ordinary human because a Nabi refers to that human. Yes it does, but not a human like you and I. Look, simple discussion. Your father is also a human. Your father is also a human. Your grandfather is also a human. But would you treat him like you treat your friends? Well, some people unfortunately do that today and treat their parents even worse. Some people have forgotten the adab for their elders and their parents. But that is a discussion by itself. But a logical person will not regard his father himself equal to his father. Why? Because he says he is in son, definitely. But he is my father. Allah brought me forth through him. Allah brought me forth through my mother. Do you understand? So you will not compare. So you cannot use the classification of human to compare yourself to your father. But people want to use the classification of human to Allah compare themselves to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is Imam al-Anbiya and who is the soul of the entire universe ala hadrat azimul barakat radiyallahu an very beautifully
talks about this in one couplet, which my Murshid Barhaq, Huzur Sayyidi wa Sanadi Sarkare Taju Sharia Rahbare Tariqat, Hadrat Allama Mufti Muhammad Akhtar Razak Khan, Imam Mufti Akhtar Razak Khan, Al Qadri Al Hari, Radi Allah, and would often recite this share of Allah Hadrat Radi Allah. کہ اللہ کی سرتا بقدم شان ہے یہ انسان نہیں انسان وہ انسان ہے یہ قرآن تو ایمان بتاتا ہے انہیں ایمان یہ کہتا ہے میری جان ہے یہ I'm going to read this for you one more time اللہ کی سرتا بقدم شان ہے یہ انسان نہیں انسان وہ انسان ہے یہ قرآن تو ایمان بتاتا ہے انہیں ایمان یہ کہتا ہے میری جان ہے یہ سبحان اللہ ہاؤ بیوٹیفلی امام اہل سنت سیری ڈو یو نو ہو سیز تھنگس لائک دس دوز ہو آر ڈراؤنڈ ان ابزورب ان دا لو آف محمد الرسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دوز ہو ہیو تھوٹ اس واٹ از ٹرو ایمان این عقیدہ دوز ہو ہیو اسٹرائیو ٹو سیو آور ایمان دوز ہو آر دا ٹرو آشکس آف دا بلو رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دے سی تھنگس لائک دس Allah ki sarta, let me give you a simple translation of it before I go further. Allah ki sarta baqadam shan hai ye. From his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sacred head to his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sacred foot, the manifestation of Allah's grandeur is he. Insaan, nahi insaan, wo insaan hai ye. A human, not like any other human. But that superhuman is he. A human, not like any other human. But that superhuman is he. Quran to iman batata hai in hai. The Quran proclaims that iman is he. Quran to iman batata hai in hai. The Quran proclaims that iman is he. Iman ye kehta hai ke meri jaan hai ye. Iman announces. That my soul is He. Subhanallah. We regard the beloved Nabi as human. Like it is our Aqeedah. But which kind of human? Allah Hazrat Adimul Barkat radiallahu an has classified and explained that He is human. But He is that human which is the soul of mankind. Humans have an excellence today and mankind has been given honor today because of Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam coming in the form of man. This is that insan that he is up that he is of Alul Bashar. There is no human like him. This is that insan that Quran to Iman Batata he in he. If you ask Quran, who is he? Oh Quran, who is he? Then Quran is saying he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Iman. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Iman. There is no doubt. Because if you say La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, yes. There is none worthy of worship except Allah. But until you do not say Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is no iman. Until you do not accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is no iman. So if you ask Quran, what is he? Quran is saying that he is iman. And you ask iman, what is he? Iman is saying, iman ye kehta hai ke meri jaan hai. Iman is announcing that he is my soul. That you can read la ilaha illallah. But till Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not come, there is no iman. It is all dependent. La ilaha illallah. When you say la ilaha illallah, then to complete this and be a Muslim, you have to say Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the anbiya ikram, he has sent the nabis in the form of man, and he has sent down wahi revelation upon them. And I said to you, a Rasul is not only specific to humans, as they are angels as well. Who are Rasuls? Going further, something very important to understand. That when Allah wills to bestow Nabuwa upon a Nabi, and keep this in mind, Almighty Allah makes the Nabi the best and the most splendid amongst all the humans. When any Nabi comes in any zamana, that Nabi is the most splendid. And all the Nabis are the most splendid amongst all humans. And the most splendid amongst all of them, even the Anbiya, is Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. 
Now again coming back to the discussion about human, the aqidah about human. The Badmazabs come and they say to you, but look, look, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had two hands, he had two eyes, he could see, he could hear, he walked with legs. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had fingers. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in human form. Indeed he is human. But we are saying he is afdalul bashar. He is the most sacred and the greatest of all mankind. But that does not in any way say that he is not nur that has come in the form of man. And they try to do this, the Badmasafs try to do this so that you say the Nabi is only human. No contact to nur whatsoever. No connection with light whatsoever. Indeed the Nabi is nur who has come in the form of human. They say, but how? How can this happen? How can nur come in the form of man? He is a man. He is a human. Look, angels are also nur. And you've heard this many times from the ulama. Angels are also, are also nur. But at times, angels come in the form of man. They come in human form. How many times it has come in the hadith of Mubarakah? That Hadrat Jibreel Amin alayhi salatu wa salam would often appear in the court of Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the form of Sahabi Rasul Hadrat Dihya Talbi radiallahu anhu. How many times it happened that Hadrat Jibreel Amin alayhi salatu wa salam would appear in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the form of a musafir as a traveler, as a wayfarer, or as someone from a foreign place because nobody would recognize him. In other words, if you look at the Hadith Sharif regarding Wahi and the Hadith Sharif regarding Iman, you will find that none from Makkah would recognize him. It came in the Hadith Sharif that his clothes were spotlessly white and his blessed hair was shining black and neatly set with no signs of any dust or sand on it. What does it mean, all this? His clothes were spotlessly white. His blessed hair was shining black with no signs of dust and sand. means that he came in the form of man. The angel came in the form of man. The angel is Noor, it is our Akida that the angel is Noor. But by him coming in the garb of man, it did not change his reality of being Noor. It did not change his reality of being Noor. When it did not change the reality of Jibreel, Ali salatu wasalam, why will it change the hakikat of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And do you know, the adab of the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why are we talking about Hadrat Jibreel alayhi sallam, and about Presenting yourself in the court of Jibreel, uh, the, the Jibreel Islam presenting himself in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Let me tell you something that Huzur Sayyid Ali Sharir said so beautifully. He presented a beautiful ex- explanation regarding this discussion when commentating on the hadith in Bukhari Sharif. He says that Hazrat Jibreel Ali, Jibreel Amin alayhi salatu wasallam would present himself in this manner before Huzur sallallahu alaihi wasallam with utmost respect, and he would sit before Huzur sallallahu alaihi wasallam with his blessed lap against the blessed lap of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in other words this is how close he would come with adab and sit with so much of respect in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam after explaining this after mentioning this huzur sayyid ta'al sharia radiyallahu anhu says it must be noted that in doing so hadrat jibril amin alayhi salam was also showing and informing the sahaba ikram that this blessed personality who is present here in Madinah sharif and who is the beloved of Hadrat Amina radiallahu ta'ala an, and who has made hijrat from, Mac- from Makkah and come here to Medina, is not an ordinary human being like you, but he is such a unique human, that even I, Jibril alayhi salam, is sitting with complete respect and humility in his holy, in his holy presence, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Subhanallah, what beautiful words of Huzur Sayyidi Taj Sharia radiallahu ta'ala an where he's explaining even the adab of Jibreel alayhi salam in the court of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because Jibreel alayhi salam was giving the sahaba even a blessed lesson to know that never think that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa is like you in any way. Because even the angel humbles himself in the court of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Because there is none like Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There can be none like Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there will be none like Rasul Pak. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is why Sayyidi Allah Hadrat Adimul Barakat radiallahu anh, so beautifully said. He said, Yahi bole sidra wale, chamane jahan kitale, sabhi mene chhan dale, tere paaye ka na paaya, tujhe yak ne yak banaya, tujhe yak ne yak banaya. And explaining that couplet of Allah Hadrat on the uniqueness 
from the uniqueness of Rasul Pak, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Murshid Barhaq, Huzur Sayyidi Taj Shariya, radiallahu anh, says beautifully, ke Mustafa'e zat yakta aap hai, yak ne jisko yak banaya aap hai. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are that one amongst the human, that unique amongst the human, that Rabbi Zul Jalal who is one, created you one most unique amongst all the creation, that there is no, nobody like you. Never was there anybody like you and no will there be anybody like you. This is our aqidah. That is why when we say that all Nabis are human, do not think that they are human like you and us. Do not compare yourself in any way. You cannot even compare yourself to the dust, the sacred dust under the sacred na'alain of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. If we understand this, then we have understood a very big portion of our Iman and Aqidah regarding the Anbiya Ikram alayhi salatu salam and regarding Rasul Akram Nuri Mujassam sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah al-Azim, Allah willing in the next session on this discussion that will be next week Saturday inshallah al-Azim, I will discuss a few more important points on Aqaid regarding the Anbiya Ikram and I will try to uh, expand to the best of my ability and with my humble knowledge and I would like to discuss the discussion regarding the wahi that descends upon the Anbiya Ikram, the revelation that comes upon the Anbiya Ikram, very important point in Aqaid and inshallah Azim we'll take it from there. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> blesses us with tawfiq khair, Allah blesses us with making amal and may Allah bless us with making our iman strong and again during this testing and most difficult time do not forget, turn towards the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I said yesterday in my Juma talk, that the grand gate to the mercy of Allah is Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Turn towards Allah's court through the wasila of rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is your protector, Allah is my protector. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything, whether it's an illness and whether it's its cure, it's from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep this in your mind and inshallah lazim, kamyabi in this dunya and kamyabi in the akhirat as well. I'm going to remind you something that Huzur Sayyidi Muhaddis Kabir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lengthen his shadow upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him with a long life and may we be blessed to attain his fuyus of barakat always. Huzur Sayyidi Muhaddis Kabir a few days said something, those of you that have read it, on, on, on the messages that go out everywhere. And I'm, I've seen it in Urdu and English as well, but I'm reminding you that try in your homes, as it said, every day after either Maghrib or after Isha, to give seven azan during this time. Because you must know azan alleviates difficulty and calamity as per Hadith Mubarakah. So give seven times azan in your homes, Huzur Muhaddisi Kabir said, after Salatul Maghrib or Salatul Isha. And try to recite one time at least Surah Yasin and one time Surah al fatah Okay, Surah Yasin, you know, is the 36th Surah. Surah Fatha is the 48th Surah of the Holy Quran. Try and do this and do not forget. Li khamsatun utfi biha harral wabail hatima al mustafa wal murtada wabnahuma wal fatima. With Bismillah, recite this, write it, keep it in your homes, keep it with you. Inshallah, Allah Allah will protect you from calamities. And as one of my dear brothers has requested that Maulana every day try and give one short wazifa for the people. So this you can regard as the wazifa for today. You all know it, I'm sure by, by now. But inshallah, as in tomorrow, uh, at the end of every session, I will try and uh, present a brief wazifa for you, which not only during this time, but you can read for other things in your life. Inshallah, Allah, Azim. Allah keep us with Iman. Let us leave this world with Iman. We make dua for the protection of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat throughout the dunya. All those that are going through calamity and difficulty, may Allah remove them from this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove this virus from us as soon as possible. And may Allah ta'ala protect us from that virus which tries to corrupt our iman. And that is the bad mazhabs and the deviants. May Allah protect us from them because that virus is more detrimental. The virus of the dunya will only take away your life. And the virus that attacks your iman and deen will take your iman away. And you will leave this dunya without anything. So that is the more detrimental virus. And like how you quarantine yourself and, and, and isolating yourself because you want to save yourself from the virus of the dunya, 
we need to isolate ourselves from the bad mazhabs as well and that is more important so that we protect our iman and our qida wa ma alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh